Hi, I'm the App Man, and here is the App of the Week. The app of the week for this week is called Celtics, C-E-L-T-X, and Celtics is an app that's designed for writing, specifically for screenwriting, playwriting, and other audiovisual type. As you can see here, you can do screenplay, stage play, audiovisual, comic book, or comic strips, and audio play. So when you open it up, you'll see a list of all the <clears throat> all the different scripts you may have in there. As I've used this quite a bit, so I've got quite a few on here. Quite a few, as you can see. It does come with a couple of um, sample scripts of different types, so you can get an idea of what each one looks like. As well as you can edit... So if you click on edit up there in the top right, then you can select the ones you want to edit. And so you can either delete these or move them around. Now if you click on the plus sign in the top left, again, it brings up the, the types that you can do. So you just choose the one you would like to use. We'll go with stage play for now. And it'll bring up a new document so that once you select it by clicking on it now to bring up the script so that you can start typing your script in <clears throat> now the advantage to using this over uh, a word processor such as Microsoft Word or Google Docs or such of those is that this one is going to be formatted in the correct format for you the standard play script format which there are variations on what is considered a standard script, play script format, but it, this one will be pretty much the, the one that you would want to use. So if you look on this screen, you've got several things you can do here. Uh, the back arrow on the top left will take you back to your documents. Then over here on the top right, you see four different things. The first one is... Uh, comments so you can add comments to wherever you need to this could be after you've written a few things you may want to put a comment to um, say we rework this dialogue if that's what you're wanting to do so that you can go back and look at your notes and say oh I need to redo this part the gear is for your adjusting for your printing you can show the first page number on or off whether you want it in US letter size or A4. In this green, you can put a parchment background if you choose, which as you can see, changes the background color a little bit. Then the square with the arrow pointing away allow you to send the, your document as an email, uh, through email as text, or through email as a PDF, or you can print it if you've got a printer set up. And then the last one is a bookmark, so you can see all the bookmarks. And it automatically sets up a bookmark everywhere that you have uh, a different act or a different scene. But you can set up others if you need to. And then you can edit those bookmarks and change them and move them around. Then if you look here across the middle of the screen, you have another menu system just above your keyboard here. The first one changes the tab setting. And basically what it's doing is it's not just changing the tab setting, but it's changing, as you can see, if you see here, it's changing the color here. And now it'll jump back over to here. So what it's doing is this button here, the arrow going to the right, is changing which type of text this is. So these are your different options for format. And so this one's allowing you to tab through each one. So as you've got it typed out on the screen, you can tab over to whatever. The first one is your act break, which this is act one. So if I, if I hit return, it put me on a new line, it automatically starts with a description. So 
so you can type whatever it was a cold cloudy day okay now if, if we didn't want it to be that one we could change it so now this is a more of a description and informant information type thing if we hit return again it's going to put us down to where this actually should be because what you should have is this should be act one the next thing should actually be the scene heading and then it should be the description setting up the scene and then the next thing should be our character talking the character names are always capitalized and then the dialogue man it's cold and cloudy today And then you hit return again, go to the next character if you want another character. It sure is. Okay, now in a script, if you have an actor who's going to do something while they're talking, then you're going to want to put that in parentheses and it goes on the next line below where their dialogue would be sitting next to Mike mind if I sit here Now you'll notice when you go to put the character name in, it automatically pulls it up for you. So you can choose if you're going to use the same two characters over and over and over again, or three or four even, it'll give you the option. The ones you're most recently using will uh, pull up their names here. So all you have to do is select the one you want to talk at this time instead of having to type it every single time. Then you go to the next line. I don't mind. And then you just keep on going and you can keep on going through without the entire script. If you click done, then you can look at the whole script as you've got it so far. And then when you're ready, You can hit the two, these two here, the two triangles, and that's a transition. So whatever your transition to the next scene would be, uh, Mike leaves. And now you've got Stage directions would be something like lights fade to black or lights fade out. And now we can go to our next scene. This would be scene two. And then we start all over again. And again, you can put a note on, a sticky note, if you want to put a note there. Or you can leave a comment up above. You can undo the last thing you did or redo it. And once you have what you're going to type, you click the back arrow up in the top left. It takes you back to your document. Now where it says theater, because that's a generic term it put on there. 
and the today shows you what date you did because if you look down below it has the other dates so if you click on the name then it'll pop up so now you can change the name to whatever and you can change the author to whoever you want And now if I wanted to email that to myself as a PDF or as a text, I could do that. The other cool thing about Celtics is that it's also available for the Mac or PC for a desktop version, which will allow you to uh, pull these up and print them or type them, or edit them, whatever you're going to do with them. And if you see here in the top right where it says edit and then there's a little cloud, you can send it to the cloud. And you can have your own account online. It doesn't cost anything to have the uh, Celtics Cloud account. But what it'll do is, by clicking on it like I just did, it'll sync up my cloud with whatever I've got on my devices. So if I have this on my Mac or PC, then what will happen is uh, I can go open the account up or open the software on the PC click on the little cloud icon on it, and then I can pull up any of these that I've got synced up. So my little sample script I did today, if I put it on the cloud, then I'll be able to pull it off on my PC or my Mac without having to email it to myself. The emailing is is good for certain things, but this one, it keeps it in the same software so you can edit it just as easy without having to worry about format and all that. As a PDF, you won't be able to reformat it without the right software to do that with. And so that's basically Celtics, and it's great for writers and aspiring writers.